Alright. Time for a Mordekaiser game. Uh, I'll be playing against the Hecarim here, which will be fine matchup wise. Definitely not a problem at all. Running Face Rush as well. Probably going to go for a Squish build, so it'll never kill me eventually. Um, so, yeah, not a problem. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you a, a good strategy with Mordekaiser. You can easily apply. It's very straightforward. This champ is extremely good at carrying solo, uh, solo queue games by himself, especially lower elo solo queue games. This will be a low elo game, by the way. And I will show you how you can abuse this to, well, end higher. The season's going to end in about two weeks or half season, I guess. I don't know. It's going to end about in a roughly two weeks. So, place it. What is happening here, man? All right. I guess I don't get to start on blue buff. I'll go over to the Raptors. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, a, that's a start. Fair enough. Invade happened. We're just going to move over here. I could technically start red here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start on the Raptors because it's slightly easier. I lose less health overall if I can just kite, uh, kind, kind of kite it like this, right? And then right here, we're just going to... Uh... Ah, that's a very annoying reset, actually. I think I just clear my top side. He did definitely take my entire bot side, I would imagine, at this point. I'd be surprised if he didn't. Uh, it's an awkward start. Normally, you'd want to just, like, start both sides, get a full clear done. Because it's definitely the, the, the safest way to go, I suppose, for Mordekaiser. Because you need your experience quite badly. Uh, but obviously, in this case, they went for them uh, for, that ra for that random invade. So that's obviously not going to happen. Which is fine. Just kind of adapt to it. Pick up either, like, wolves or raptors like I did. And then you can swipe your clear this way. It should be okay. I might be able to uh, perform a top lane gank here. Potentially. I kind of adjust a little bit, otherwise I could kind of just go for his blue buff potentially as well. Let's go over this way. Take all of my abilities here because I'm not going to get full clear done. You can technically go like double point Q. Oh god. See, that's a waste of my time. That's really sad. Damn. All right. I also gave away my position now, so this is going to get uh, potentially interesting for his blue buff. He is not here. He obviously should just take my entire bolt side and take his entire bolt side. What he just essentially did was uh, create a split map position by him invading my blue like that. So I should be able to take his top side here without an issue. At least that's what I assume. Uh, use your smite as late as possible. Like, I'm not insta-smiting this for the specific reason that if he would show up, I'd rather have the smite to finish a camp. Whatever camp that might be. And he walk past me, obviously. More to, or uh, the, uh, the hacker room is supposed to be both side. If he walks blue to blue, uh, if he does that, by the way, like if that happens to you, where like he invades blue and instantly sprints for his blue, that's going to cost him a tremendous amount of overall time, which wouldn't be worth it for him. Because if he does that, then my respawn on my blue doesn't really matter too much. He's wasted so much time that if I just swipe my toplet camps the way I did, then uh, I should be able to easily outpace him. It's just not going to be good for him because he's going to delay everything at that point, right? Like his camp respawn is going to be really late. He's going to get really late on like a second level respawns and all that type of stuff. So it's not going to be good for him whatsoever doing that. And this way, as you can see, I can kind of make like a little bit of a circle. Or I guess you can call it a rectangle. And I can just clear this and then go back into the uh, scuttle or into the raptor respawn uh, right now. So it actually works out quite nicely for me. And I just have a sequence that still works. Now, otherwise, obviously, normally you can just go for the full clear, as I said. That, is, uh, that entirely depends on the situation. Now, this is the camp that's going to respawn for me next. My bolt side camps are a little bit of a question mark, depending on what order and if they if he did them at all. He has 28 CS, so I can assume he did everything. So there is Trendemir. Open that way. I feel like I should be fine. I don't think he has... He does have Ghost. Then. Yeah, with Ghost, I'm never going to catch him, because if we both Ghost... Um, he is uh, gonna be slightly faster because he has more base movement speed. So there's nothing I can do. I'll just take the reset. Oh, Get this. This is just fine. And I'll just walk towards both sides. Because by the time, this should easily respawn my both side camps at this moment in time as well. If I walk all the way over here, then... I mean, th these two camps should probably be up. And this camp is most likely going to be down. So... Or up, sorry. This is going to be up. These cranes should most likely be up. But if I walk like this, this camp is going to be down. And that's going to just delay me a lot. So going for like Gromp here should be better. It's still down. I wonder how he cleared this. Because if he just took this once again, that'd be interesting. Is he, was he this slow? I was about to say. What the hell? 
but he was really slow. I think what he did is he took my blue buff and then ran out uh, to like his campsite of the jungle again and then went back for my Gromp. What? That's so weird. I don't, I don't even know what just happened. That's, that must have been what he did because I'm so surprised by this respawn timer. That's really strange. All right, then. Well, sure, I guess. That, that's like the weirdest respawn timer ever. Normally, that should be up if he just like normally clears my entire bot side like he should have done. But okay. Shouldn't be a gank option now. Well, we're good. My raptor should respawn relatively soon here as well now. And Top Scuttle is going to spawn as well as the red buff soon. There is the Raptor camp spawn. I'm just going to do Krugs first and then I'm going to go Krugs, like Krugs, Raptors, Top Scuttle potentially. Uh, kind of our, my main goal right now is just to get a full clear out, right? I'm still like consistently clearing for that. Did try some uh, top lane activities, but it sadly didn't work. But yeah, there's not too much going on gank wise in this game, so it's fine. The, the early invade just made it a little bit, I guess, awkward, you could call it. I could just run for the scuttle here, but I'm not going to do that. And the reason I'm not doing this scuttle is because of Trendemir's consistent, like, massive pressure there. There is not a whole lot I can do. Because mid lane's getting pushed in, top lane's getting pushed in. If I walk up to the scuttle right now, uh, that would be a bit of a problem for me. There's the ward. I know Trendemir's somewhere in this area, so I'm going to have to be respectful. Sadly. I'm just going to do it over here. My smite should be up in time for this, hopefully. Otherwise, I can delay myself a little bit like this by just tanking a hit. Alright, just let it reset. I'm getting a double invaded by their solo laners, unfortunately. Killed myself. He might be dead, might not be dead. He's not dead. That's a very unfortunate invade for me, really. <laughs> right, just throw it over here, man. Just throw it this way. Thank you. Nice. Got him over the wall. What an invade. I knew something like that was going to go on. Like, if you see something like that happening, just, like, kind of stand up here so you have a way out. If I would do it in the, inside of the pit there, I would have a very, very high chance at dying uh, to, well, them invading me. Uh, so that's not something you want to do. Because I positioned myself all the way over here, I had ways to run. And without them hurting me too much for the invade it was a really obvious one because both sides both lanes were pushed in right so both of them have the opening to go for that potential invade and if I, you position yourself as safe as possible i'll be fine if i would do it like standing on top of it right here this would be a problem it's gonna ping my bot side here and let them know that they have to be careful and because hecarim we saw him run bot side as well i'm just gonna do herald right after this essentially i also hit level six they did in fact do dragon that's fine this dragon is completely fine. I would have more like it would have been worse to lose this Rift Herald. So I'm actually just gonna take Rift Herald now and be very happy with the trade he made. He doesn't value the Herald over the dragon, or at least the first Herald, which is a mistake. Because this one's worth more. Okay. Just clear this out of base, it's fine. I might lose my entire bolt side for him being there, which is okay. I can uh, kind of walk into his top side here, potentially look for like a dive on Trendemir as well, even. I mean, it is a trend in here, but, you know, not that, not that bad. Over this way. His blue is up, as I, as, it, as it should be, because he ran down. He might take my bot side for it. Here is the, the Hecarim, so we're just going to fight him, because we have ult now. There's nothing he can do. I'm ult in here. It should be fine. Really? I'm just gonna ghost to get the ghost extension instantly and hopefully my team shows up. Shield myself right now. Knock him with me here. Keep my red buff on him the entire time and I should be able to kill him quite easily there as you can see. Like, this is the good thing about Mordekaiser, right? Like, you're such a strong champion. The only really thing I did to make up for the entire situation was I just made sure I cleared my camps, right? Because as soon as you get a little bit of levels going on this champ, you're so unbelievably unkillable. 
Like, that hacker room did not stand a chance, obviously, due to Mordekaiser ultimate, giving me a colossal advantage. And after that, like, it's not like Akali is gonna one you one me. There are very few champions, especially coming out of Mordekaiser ultimate with a kill. Uh, you get, like, very good uh, value out of the champion you kill, right? So, it's gonna be nearly impossible for them to actually do something against me. I'm just gonna go for top turret here. With the third plates. Hacker room went uh, mid lane, that's fine. I should be able to just quickly get this done. That's not actually what I intended to do, but okay. Just want to clear the wave. I don't necessarily want to farm. We go max E sec, and then we just force the turret down because the Trenimer can never react to this in time. Hacker room is actually bot side, uh, so this should be fine. I'm question mark pinging this, but I don't think Rakan's gonna check. That's fine. We got the entire turret, which is absolutely beautiful money. This is the kind of stuff you kind of want to look for with Rift Trail, right? Like, if you see a good opportunity like that, that's kind of what you want. If you can get a turret down, that is the best thing. Best case scenario. We get this, just steel caps, and then we build into Jock Show. There we go. Good. Get resistances. And now the next thing I want to play for is this dragon. It is, at this point, kind of unlikely that he goes from a bot set camp. As you see, like, he the Cho got overstayed and he greeted for it. So, that's unfortunate for Cho. Uh, he should have just recalled. But in this case, I could just full clear down and basically play for the dragon respawn so I can get into the objective. I'm not going to lose any of these camps anytime soon, so there's nothing too much to worry about. I could just go for this. There's also still a chance that I can go for uh, for the top lane kill on Trendemir here because he doesn't have ult. So this would be fine. Because I now also have Rylai, so all I really have to do is ult him and he's dead. Which I cannot reach him for, unfortunately. That's fine, though. This way he doesn't get any plates, which I guess is fine. I don't... Still, I'm, th these camps are not on the risk of losing them, right? Like, it's not like Hecarim is going to sprint over there and lose them right away. And so, delaying those camps a little bit and playing in towards the dragon spawn here is kind of like how you want to look at this. Instead of sprinting bot side. I'm going to hold on to my smite here too. Pretty heavy commitment there, but it's okay. He is uh, kind of dying. All good. As you can see, all these camps are still here. There was never really a threat of losing them. So this is absolutely good for me. Let's clear this, and then I will... Uh, look at, like, Ash from Botland here, for example. Could definitely be a good kill opportunity. I can smite here, because I have another smite for Dragon. I can just walk into the Ash. I just have to uh, press Ghost, and I should be able to reach him with ult. Very good, he's dead. She can't get away from me anymore now. There she goes. I think the hacker room thingy bugged out. I'm just gonna mute whoever that was. The Yasuo, okay. The, the reason we push that wave is because the dragon's spawning and we need to push it as quickly as possible into the turret so we can play for dragon. Because uh, with the wave going into turret, we have that pressure going and then th this way we can play for this. This is not the most ideal thing in the world. Khan doesn't have ult. Yasuo ran mid lane instead, which is quite poor. Obviously. Yasuo running mid air is a little bit of a problem. Because, like, right now he's just trolling, right? Clearly. Which might cost me my life, actually. Get my shield, please, 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 please. Whew. I'm alive. My shield cooldown was good. Yeah, this Yasuo is just hard grifted. That's unlucky. Really unlucky. It is what it is. Oh, nice. Syndra gets the kill. It happens. Here, you can upgrade into the Magi's if you want to. I won't do it here, because low low video. I respect the fact that people uh, can't potentially hold their Magi's stacks. Uh, you can still do this later. Mordekaiser becomes extremely tanky, so doing this later is still fine. Like, I can get, like, two items, maybe three items, and then upgrade my Magi's would still be okay. Because uh, Mordekaiser gets extremely hard to kill, so sh realistically holding onto your Magi's stack shouldn't be that big a deal, right? Uh, so they're currently pushed up all the way under turret, so instead of instantly going for Dragon, we're going to go for the gank first. Because with them positioned here, this is going to be a very free opportunity. I'm going to have to go for Ash first. Ash first is definitely the move. Good kill. I won't reach him, unfortunately. Didn't have a ghost or anything. This is fine. 
Now, this Rift Herald spawn is worth a lot less, so we're not going to go for that. We're just going to go for the dragon. Uh, it seems like Yasuo just went on the hard in streak, uh, streak, which is fine. Yeah, this Rift Herald doesn't matter anymore. At this moment in time, I prefer the dragons over the Rift Herald. It's just the first Rift Herald uh, that, I would hide, that, that I would value more. So now playing for dragon is good for me. This, uh, this is what we want to see, basically. Good, get that down. And then right now, because they didn't in instantly go for Herald, like obviously I don't just want to give, give Herald. Like if I can contest it, that would be fine. Uh, but if, the, if it comes between a trade, I'll take the dragon. Uh, but in this case, I can easily do this because they stalled going for the fight instead. Uh, so they didn't actually take Herald, which gives me a chance to take Herald now, which is nice. So because they didn't instantly take the objective, it's just what I'm going to do now. I really hope this guy, like, he's going to just take all my camps now. All right, cool. I think three minions that I should have pushed anyway is losing him his marbles. Oh, please don't take my red buff. Don't, please. No, the reason I don't want this is because I can share it with him, but he's obviously not going to listen. Okay, well, nice. Good, uh, good thing there, buddy. That's nice, good stuff. He's going to ult the hacker him so I can kill him for free and I get the bonus stats and I can win the fight. Go for Swain first, I guess, because Akali is just going to be way harder to kill. Oh, that Ash ultimate, though. You rats. Oh, that Ash ultimate is really frustrating, actually. Going to take the kill for me. Ah, oh, thank you. I, I look at this, man. Like, I literally just lost all three of my camps to this guy because of a wave that I should have pushed anyway. That's crazy. What a mental player. All right, let's look at this. Um, a magic resist is going to be quite good here right now. So we're just going to go. Um, I, I went for that anyway, right? I, I could have built a Sunfire, by the way. But with that team comp, I didn't necessarily want to build Sunfire here. Just going quicker Jock Show into magic resist due to their nature of their team is going to be slightly better for me here, I think. So I didn't actually opt for Sunfire here. I can do this and then build like a Demonic, for example instead of the sunfire for the same kind of effect yeah having heavier magic resist against akali swain gonna be quite good otherwise you can just go rylize into sunfire as well All right this guys mental Get the turret. His red should be up. It is. He's gonna try to last hit this for absolutely zero reason, so I'm gonna have to smite this, unfortunately. I'll ult the hacker him. He should be dead. Go for Ash right now. I'm unkillable, so I don't have to worry too much. Ash decided to flash the wall. I can't follow that, obviously. So I'm just going to walk at this. I'm getting heavily body blocked by Murakan here. Got the approach velocity, so she is dead. There's no way she can run from me with the approach, right? Unless she has flash, obviously. That definitely helps him. He's looping from behind. It's fine. Just hit him. Hold on to my E until he, like, uses his dash, really. Or kill him because he doesn't ult. That's fine with me, too. At this point in the game, we can just run at them. It's not a big deal. They can't do anything anyway. They're just going to die to uh, me getting Rylai's proc on them and just running them down. Because I can't die here, right? Like, this is pretty free, as you can see. Literally, permanently full HP. Doesn't really matter what they do. Just pop the Herald here. Third. Beautiful stuff. That's all I wanted, really. Jack Show is still proc the entire time there, making sure not to lose it. This Yasuo is obviously going to try to last hit this camp because he's a mental case. 
Look at him, man. Just look at him. Actually look at him. Three minions. And he's taken nine camps from me, essentially, in, the, in like as a trade. Three minions. That's crazy. Wow. What a man. What an absolute unit of a player. That's crazy. We have the dragon respawn I'm playing for here. So uh, we're going to go for that. They might actually Baron here. Uh, they definitely Baron here, I think. But I think it's unstoppable. So I guess I just Dragon. I don't know what this Joe is typing, but okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, we lose Baron here for sure, but it's okay. There it is. Yep. I never would have been able to stop that. After uh, Cho'Gath dies, Yasuo is never going to rotate anyway. Cinderella is in base, so it's never going to happen. It's just a minus one Baron, sadly. It's okay. We'll just get this. We'll recall here. And uh, we get the Abyssal Mask. Now, in this case, I can actually upgrade into the Dark Seal, into the Magi's. Which I am gonna do, and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm just so unbelievably unkillable anyway. What is going on here? Why? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter that much now because I get the buff anyway, but it's like... Right, cool, thanks fam. That's uh, XP to lose, I suppose. What, what way is he gonna go? Yeah, I figured. Okay, good. Uh, please just need to reach him i cannot reach him because of ghost that sucks close one at least he didn't get local gold from this turret so he didn't actually get any any gold value if you get local gold from this turret 600 gold which is a lot so him getting zoned off that that gold is really big actually i should have been level 16 ish by now if yasuo didn't take literally everything from me honestly but it is what it is My team is flaming each other as well. That's going to get interesting. Here, I just want you to note here that you don't have to worry about anything. Just don't worry about anything. If a fight happens, it happens. You will win. All you have to do is ult correctly. That's literally it. As long as you ult correctly, you will never die. I'm just going to push in bolt wave here instead of doing nothing for a dismit inhibitor because that thing is worthless anyway. Like, playing for the enemy bolt turret here would be 600 gold for me, which is quite good. Um, my Cho and my... Like, this Yasuo is just completely griefing it at some point here. It is kind of whatever, I guess. Just farming the camps there is just like, yeah, okay. But because he is doing that, my only real option is just to do this. Because I, I wanted to be the one farming the camps. But he did not agree with that decision. So, we are just going to take wave CS instead. I play for a red buff here. If they try to engage or fight me here, I don't really care. That's kind of what I want anyway. So, that's kind of what I'm going for. Like right here, for example. Like Rukon walks up. This should be a dead Swain. Good. That's one kill. Let's just build the Hecarim out of this one. He should be the freest kill. Unless you go this way, you rat. I should be completely fine here. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Alright. Just smite that for the XP. He's gonna get the buff anyway, but I just want all the XP I can get right now to hit level 16. But yeah, as you can see there, they, they walk at me. It doesn't matter. It does nothing. <laughs> there is nothing they can do against me to uh, to survive there. I probably shouldn't be chasing Trandomir here, to be fair. I think this is a waste of my time. I'll get the Krugs, and I'll try to play for, like, the Dragon, I guess, after this reset. And no matter what my team does, like, I just do my own thing. We're chilling. That is the way of Mordekaiser. You're just chilling. All right. Again, I could still get Sunfire if I wanted to. But at this stage, like, with not having to worry about physical damage as much, I am just going to go for more damage in the form of Demonic. That's also why I didn't really build Sunfire initially, because Ash was never really going to be a th threat uh, that I couldn't deal with, like, just Steel Caps and Jukcho. And uh, going for... Uh, like Sunfire wasn't necessary, whereas I can just kind of trade Sunfire spot for Demonic, because what was my plan? 
Uh, but if you're not gonna go Magius ever, um, then definitely you can just go Sunfire. Like after Rylas, just get Sunfire. And then you can go Jock Show, and that'll be fine too. And you can still get the Demonic instead of the uh, the uh, Magius later in the build, basically. But I opted for the this route instead. It's not a problem. I just, I'm just gonna do this because I just want to show you what I mean with this champ. It just doesn't die. It doesn't. It means nothing basically. And that's very annoying though. Wait. Whoa. Okay, that's how I die. That is actually how I die. What? The timing on that man. The Akali still had everything as well, like her ult and everything, which is something I wasn't expecting. But the timing on that was crazy because I ulted. But I believe, Hec like, I ulted the Hecarim, but the Hecarim ulted at the same time, so my ult got cancelled. And the second my ult gets cancelled, I instantly lose that fight. Because at that point, I will not be able to go into my ultimate, and I will not be able to get come out of my ultimate with, like, additional, like, stats, basically. So, at the instant second that happened, I just died. That is crazy. Okay. Well, I, I, that's the way you die, I suppose. <laughs> fair enough. I, uh, yeah, fair enough. That's the way you die. If you don't get your ultimate off, you die. Which is what happened there, which calls me Dragon, unfortunately. I also didn't expect, like, to be fair, I also didn't expect Akali to literally still have everything up uh, to kite me to the moon, which was kind of annoying, but yeah, I guess that is a minor detail. Because I would have imagined, like, off, off of my the back of my team dying there, it would have just been a free, um, like a free play, because they should have used their cooldowns, right? That's what I assumed, at least, which I was clearly wrong about, but that's what I assumed. I'm just gonna clear two camps to hit level 16 mostly here, and I can go like red buff here. Trenor is probably gonna try for that, so I'm gonna try to fight him on it. And I'll play for the Baron, it's okay. I've got some spicy teammates for sure though. Let me just finish this. I don't want to smite this either. I'd rather have my smite ready for the Baron. If I can get Trenor here, that would be good. Mr. Stun. I didn't ward Baron, that's kind of bad. We walk back forward. The problem here is they're just gonna be doing Baron. Oh, they, okay, we have a ward now, this is good. Renamir has nowhere to run, he should be dead. Dead, yes, good. Good enough for me. Renamir being dead is already more than, more than fine. Mid lane's dead as well, okay. Cinder, I walked up too far, we have no turrets. Like, her walking up like that is just guarantee her death. Obviously, I have quite a bit of gold, but uh, yeah. I'm above my 10 stack mark from Amagize again, so it's fine. I got the movement speed increase. That's why I like it so much, by the way. Um, it's just for that movement speed increase. That movement speed increase is massive. Because it allows you to just get in range much, much easier. I'll just go for Swain, it's fine. Alright, he ults that. Okay. Shield here. Do him. It's fine. I'm gonna get kited by Ash if I am not careful. Didn't get the pullback on him, really. I can't chase that. She will kill me. Actually kind of wild. That champion is such good kite potential. I actually couldn't reach. I'm down to do this if they want to do it. But I need them to help me, like, completely. This guy obviously doesn't have ult, I don't think. The fact that Yasuo is just sprinting bolt here is a criminal move. Like, actually. Like, that's, that's completely insane. I just need to go get the tank it now. He's gonna obviously smite this out, which is be fine. Roll out his ultimate. Kill him. Good. I'll tank it now. It's fine. The fact, like, look at this guy, man. Like, that's just crazy. He just runs bold in a situation like that. That's mental. That's absolutely mental. All right, then. Fair enough, I guess. It makes Baron a lot more tricky not having Yasuo's DPS on this, for sure. Which might actually cost us here, does it? I got it. We're good. We're just gonna ult him straight away. We completely 50-50. Or Yasuo completely 50-50 flipped that one. Let's put it uh, in an actual way that makes sense. I'm just gonna slowly play it towards the TP. If they want to chase me, it's fine. If they don't, that's fine too. Interesting. That's such a massive flip on Baron though. Like, this guy's mental. It's okay.
I think, uh, did he mental boom off of three minions? Like, I'm actually genuinely curious now. Like, did three minions completely design his entire mental game? Because that is, that would be wild. It would absolutely be wild. Uh, let's get the, I mean, I could sell steel caps here pretty easily at this point. Because the moment I get in range with, like, blue smiter and ghost, it should be completely fine to just do this. And the best one to go for right here would definitely be stone plate to compensate. I guess Stoneplate will give me resistances to both, right? So I lose armor from the boots, but I'm going to gain armor from the Stoneplate. Uh, so even though I don't have an armor item like Sunfire this game, I would still be completely fine tank-wise. Uh, even better, probably, because of, like, uh, Stoneplate shield and stuff. But this is fine. Again, this Demonic could easily be a uh, Sunfire as well. Kind of giving the similar purpose type item. Or if I'm not running Magius, you can just have a Sunfire and that slot and have the Demonic and have both of them, if that makes sense. So that is something to potentially think about or look for. I'm just going to cut this guy off. As long as I hit all the bushes with my blue smite, it should never really be a problem. This guy already gets him by himself. Yep. Fair enough. Fourteen seconds. Let's clean this. Hecarim ran top lane, okay. Then I just go for the dragon. This game is... Uh, this game is something else like this could have been such an easy game for like i don't know <laughs> i don't know i guess it's a classic example of just low low randomness i suppose it is what it is oh give Ugo, Urgot, uh, can i get him the ult stack okay his ult was about to come up so i just delayed it there was no risk of losing it i would have insta smited if something like a swain uh swain w appeared or whatever like right, right the eye thing I would have just instantly um, just smited it. I was ready to smite it. It was just like, if I can give him the old stack, I'll give him the old stack, basically. All three inhibitors are down, so all I really have to do is just walk forward, honestly. Don't get hit. Kind of looking for any type of poke, potentially, you know? That's probably not a target to pick, but we went for it anyway. He should be dead. There she goes. Good. As you can see here, I'm not too worried about not having boots because of Rylice and Approach Velocity. It should generally be more than fine. Stoneplate, the second shield there. As you can see, nothing to worry about. And she's dead. We just walk forward. Like, at this point, you just walk at them. You pick a good old target, uh, whoever that might be. I preferably would have done Ash, but I should I did a Kali instead, which kind of works, so to be fair. I used my sweeping trinket to give her position away uh, in her shroud so I can exactly know where she is, so I have a chance of landing my Qs. And yeah, I mean that's really that. A bit of a uh, a bit of a strange game, I suppose. It ended up being slightly dragged out, but I suppose it's a classic example of just low elo uh, solo queue. Which is fine. There you go. That is it for Mordekaiser. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button below. It helps me out quite a bit. If you'd like to see more videos from in the future, hit the subscribe button as well. And I will see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, so for the endgame stats here, I ended up doing a nice 48.9k damage, which is double the rest of the game, basically. Like my team, at least, you know. Uh, obviously, slightly less on, like, Cho'Gath, but yeah, the, the rest of these did basically nothing. So you're kind of just 1v9ing. Uh, becoming unkillable unless your ult doesn't work that's the uh, i believe that's the one death i had right do i have one yes i have one the one death i had was where my ult got cancelled out uh, so that is definitely something to keep in mind also to keep in mind with qss by the way if they do build qss to cancel your ultimate pick another target i uh, just pick like whoever doesn't have the qss to ult because obviously that would not be good uh, just let them waste their money uh, objective damage here at 62.5 trying to keep on top of this as much as possible of course focusing the uh, initial herald as like a priority. Uh, healing done at 26.2. Damage taken at 46.6. We have self-mitigated at another 92.7. Uh, so you can clearly see here, like, I took so much damage. This is like a 140k odd uh, damage that I took. But I also did, like, a colossal amount as well with 49k here too. So that's really good. Uh, and then for the self-mitigated, I already did that gold earned here. That's the one at 19.7, uh, which despite losing about 15 camps, I think, to Yasuo, uh, still ended up being quite good. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, runes here. Conquer healed me for 1700. Uh, triumph for about 4000. Um, then we have tenacity, CC reduction, lost stand for 1500 extra damage, which is huge. Uh, just having this to be low HP like for uh, quite a while, half the damage increase is very very good for like one v one potential. Uh, we have a, a magical footwear for not having to buy boots, so you can rush your Rhylize and then approach velocity eventually to. Uh, well, permanently be on top of them, right? Like you saw, I could easily sell my boots at some point as well there at the end uh, without too much of a hassle if I just have like Ghost and if I have like the Blue Smite even like close to the distance in the first place, uh, it should be more than fine. Uh, Build-wise here as well, just something to note once again, if you don't want to go Magi's uh, at all, that's completely fine. You just go like Rylice into, um, like I kind of had the idea of going Magi's anyway, right? So you go Rylice into Sunfire, into Jukcho, and then instead of Magi's, you can just build Demonic and have like Abyssal Mask and Stoneplate still, for example, or like Abyssal Mask and Thornmail uh, would work as well, to be fair. But that would be a build if you're not going to go for the Magi's. Uh, or like you could still replace the Demonic regardless for the Sunfire if you need more armor into a game. In this game, I didn't really have to have that much armor because it was a Trendemir that was mostly the only scary thing for armor. Um, so it wasn't too much to worry about compared to Akali Swain, so I opted for faster magic resist in the form of a, a Jock Show second, and then uh, going down that route, essentially uh, making up for the, for, the, for the difference, basically. So, yeah, that is it for Mordekaiser. Uh, be sure to use this champion to win your games at the end of the season and get a higher rank. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Bye!